Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. It's uh, GGN here for Friday, November 15th, 2013. This is my website, ggnonline.net. On YouTube, my channels are DDarko2012 and DDarko2013. Uh, thank you to those who have helped by uh, donating. I truly do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to keep moving here with uh, some different news. It's kind of a more of conspiracy, but... Uh, I noticed a, a string of articles, like kind of a theme going on, which is besides Obamacare and all that and his legacy is on the line, is all kinds of stuff about politicians and how people don't trust them. And you got the crack, uh, the guy, the, the crack smoking, the Toronto mayor, 40% of UK voters disconnected from the party system. So, uh, you know. Uh, Hegel bashing the nuclear, the, the generals or the leaders in charge of nuclear uh, stockpile, Secret Service guys uh, being busted for prostitutes. I mean, it's all in there. I guess it's just to get people to just not even want to think about the political process at all. I mean, didn't really have a say before. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be concerned about anything. You, you should. You should at least be aware of what they're doing. As far as are you going to be able to uh, are you going to be able to have any kind of decision making? Um, are you going to be tar take play? Are you going to take part in the decision making process? That's the point I'm trying to make. And what I'm trying to say is, we don't. I, I don't think we ever really had. That's the system that we have. It's not direct democracy. So we have a system that's really good for corporations and, and big industries, whether it's you know big oil or insurance companies or big banks. Uh, and they're the ones that actually elect these people. That's how it's set up. The quote, great forefathers didn't include popular vote into the equation because they said that the masses just weren't, uh, they shouldn't have that power to, to vote like that. So here you go. This is all in the news. Uh, everybody's talking about Obamacare. Um, but now the theme is, is, it's, is it going to be a failure? So I guess they're just grooming the GOP and Republican neocons uh, for 20, what, 2016, Obama's authority and legacy are on the line. Well, his authority was already illegitimate, just like Bush, just like every president before him. So I think his legacy is going to be the same. He's no better or no worse than any other dictator that's ever been in any type of system that calls himself a democracy or a quote republic. Oh, yeah, and he, he, you know, he's responsible for drone bombing and killing people overseas in the name of fighting terrorism. So not much difference in legacy from Bush. Yeah, this is from McClatchy, Healthcare Law, could be Obama's second term curse. So I think most people didn't even want Obamacare. So again, it's something that's being forced on people. Obama's healthcare fix could raise premiums in 2015. The regime's fix for the Affordable Care Act may solve some immediate political problems, but it will likely create other concerns by causing premiums for health plans to increase in 2015. Businesses cut full-time workers to meet Obamacare. I've covered all this before, but just to go through it quickly, a strong uh, study of small businesses found that many are cutting full-time workers or worker hours to comply with Obamacare. It says franchises are making the biggest cuts, and of course they're going to hire other people that are part-time, which will show up on the unemployment and it'll say that it's actually lowering unemployment. So that's why I call it the unemployment care. And then just going through it, um, they just reiterate, it was his biggest domestic policy achievement. So he's going to work to regain the credibility and the public's trust saying, I hear you loud and clear. 40% of UK voters are disconnected from the party system, says a poll. It said 4 in 10 voters are, feel disconnected or alienated from party politics. They hold a skeptical or deeply skeptical perceptions of standards and do not trust those in public life. They also found that British young adults are more disengaged from the country's party system than the other voters. <laughs> this is great because this is what they always say. You gotta get out and vote, right? You gotta vote. And then people literally kind of like verbally attack you around you, friends, family, whatever, just co-workers. If you say you don't want to vote or you don't vote um, because it's about it's about uh, legitimizing an illegitimate system. So if everybody goes and participates in it or acts like they're participating in a democratic process, then it gives it credence, right? Um, it says the findings have raised fears of a low turnout at the general elections in the UK in 2015. I've always made that, that, uh, that uh, uh, I've said this before. What if only like one person showed up to vote and nobody else did? Well, they would just hire people and pay them off to go out and vote. And then they would call that 
a successful election, a legitimate election. German ex-president on trial for corruption. The former German president, Christian Wolf, has gone on trial for alleged charges of corruption for accepting favors when he was a state premier. So this is one of those things where it's just like, well, this is like every politician. The thing is, is that they usually have something on everybody. And when you don't play the game, then they pull your card. Uh, I just scrolled down, I saw this uh, comment. He was removal from powers a coup d'etat. He was trapped by the Zionist pressure groups in Germany because he tried to constitute peace with the Arabic world and Iran. He was lucky that he didn't have to die like the other former member of the German administration, Malaman, who they killed. His trial was a warning to all Germans that the administration, that Germany, that uh, Germany is not an independent state but relies on or only on Israel and their friends in America. And someone completely agreed, so. But it also applies to presidents, you know, all around the world, including Obama, you know. Um, supposed ex-classmate claims teenage Obama traded gay sex with older men for cocaine and an education. I think they even have a little picture down here, but maybe they don't. Uh, but either way, you know, uh, it could have been the insurance companies or the um, uh, natural gas companies that put Obama in office. And if he didn't try to shove that bill, the Affordable Care Act, down their throats, uh, well, then they'd pull his, uh, I guess, gay sex and cocaine card. And he's not born in the U.S. or not a U.S. citizen card. Okay, then we have Toronto Mayor Rob Ford admits buying drugs. So you guys all heard this. I never covered it once because it's just so overcovered in the media. So the council meeting, oh, this is what's important though. The council meeting asked him to step aside and take leave of absence. But he said, I'm most definitely keeping the job. I'm not leaving here. What someone said was that uh, basically if he says he refuses to step down and no one's making him step down. Thus, this is a stunt to promote the use of crack, cocaine, alcohol, and extramarital affairs. This is uh, misguiding the public. Uh, laughing at wicked vile things so you accept it to some degree they're making a spectacle out of a charade and rob ford is saying everything on cue don't let them fool you i think there is uh, some truth to this um you know with uh, bush they could have pulled his card because you know the elections could have been rigged um if they're not all rigged uh, you know uh, with uh, clinton you know oh he's just like us right uh, he's getting blowjobs in the, in the white house in the oval office but before that, it was a little more innocent, uh, right? You know, with Reagan, you know, they had him dress him up with a cowboy hat and put him on a horse and act like he was a farmer um, when he was an actor. He was just acting. Um, then you have, uh, you have what, uh, before we had uh, the peanut farmer. Oh, he's just a lonely peanut farmer, farmer Jimmy Carter. So talking about this uh, guy, uh, this mayor, says, truly disturbing, Toronto Mayor gets a TV show. So maybe this person is right when they say they're making a spectacle out of this charade. Um, but what did happen is this guy was, uh, they passed it. So, yeah, Toronto votes to strip Rob Ford's powers 39 to 3. Moving on, the Navy cuts ties with contractor accused of trading prostitutes for secrets. They uh, says here the U.S. Navy has killed three contracts worth $200 million with Glenn Defense Marine Asia, which uh, says here they accuse of furnishing prostitutes, cash, and other perks to active duty officers in exchange for military information that was either sensitive or classified. Secret Service agents accused of sex misconduct in 17 countries. The whistleblowers disclosed the information of members of the Senate Homeland Security Committee on Thursday. Hired prostitutes visited brothels, engaged in extramarital affairs, and had relations with foreigners while being on duty as part of Obama's security detail. This is what I was talking about. Hagel warns of troubling lapses in U.S. nuclear forces. He acknowledged their troubling lapses of professionalism within the ranks of nuclear forces on Friday. It included among those who operate and support the Air Force's nuclear missile force. This was at the headquarters of the Nuclear Warfighting Command in Omaha, Nebraska. The setbacks included the removal of two senior nuclear commanders last month among investigations of misconduct and a failed safety and security inspection of the nuclear base in Montana in August. The Pentagon chief said there's no room for error in the nuclear force. So who knows? Are these guys not uh, following orders, or are they just not doing what they're supposed to be doing? You have chosen a profession where there's no room for error. That's what the American people expect for you from all of us, and you must deliver. Then U.S. Border Patrol has alarming alcohol problems, says internal memo inside source. The awareness, alcohol awareness class is offered as a solution, which I don't think it will, but Border Patrol is averaging almost two alcohol-related arrests per week. They said a continued level... Uh, within our agency is alarming and detrimental to the overall well-being of our workforce. 
says, have you been smoking pot? The Denver police have a new way of telling the nasal ranger. I mean, that just looks ridiculous. But that despite cannabis being legal in uh, Colorado, an odor ordinance could spell trouble for users. The potential $2,000 fine. Anyone found guilty of polluting the atmosphere with high concentrations of cannabis. So you can't make that stuff up. DHS creates a new fusion center taking control of local police. They're doling out billions of dollars to convince local police departments to surrender control to the federal agency, says a, basically a report. It says here that intelligence gathered at precincts and their surveillance centers will be shared among all levels of law enforcement. So there's a new application that plots your next Facebook status. If you still are on Facebook, the moment when you want to say something in Facebook status but you are too tired, lazy, or unimaginative to create something worthy of your friends hitting the like button, now there's an app for that. It says, what would I say created uh, whatever by grad students generates status updates for users by running old statuses through a bot. The app uses a Markov bot uh, to use text from previous Facebook statuses and predict what you'll say next. Then this Toyota concept car will read your emotions. We're talking about a big uh, rollout of biometric facial scans. I've been covering that in news a lot lately everywhere. Even when you go to the gas station, uh, it says here, Toyota's vision for the transportation of future includes a car that can read your emotions and facial expressions, forging a bond between man and machine, which is slowly taking place. I mean, when, you're complete, when your livelihood is, com uh, is completely relying on it, then uh, you're basically merged with it. Uh, me using this computer interacting with it you interacting with the internet it's like you know you're being merged with it whether i really like it or not i think the thing is about control right as long as you still feel like you have some sort of control over it but i think eventually if, when people you know this whole transhumanism thing that goes further down the road uh, people are gonna have to make the decision whether you know how far they're gonna go with merging machines and some people go completely with it and with the increase of automation and singularity and AI and all of that, uh, it could be that these people really do separate into a different species, and uh, you know the only way to survive and and stuff like that is to go with that. And if you don't, well then you'll be left on the outskirts of civilization, which I'm not sure necessarily it would be a bad thing. But if you're out there and you're trying to survive, grow your own crops, be free, um, and you know drone strikes, uh, drones and robots and stuff like that, and super soldiers come out and start to you know just uh, killing people in mass, then that could be a problem, right? But this car bike hybrid, which is a three wheel, one seat vehicle, enhances the driving experience by connecting physically and emotionally with the driver, becoming more fun to drive and more to use. It's reading voice and facial expressions, recognizing mood, and adjusting accordingly. It says the windshield is equipped with a futuristic display that changes colors depending on the mood. If you have road rage, it'll turn red alert other drives on the road of the mood shift. The windshield display will also report traffic conditions and safety information. And you did have the one guy, I think he was got arrested. Um, one guy got kicked out of McDonald's for wearing the Google glasses. And you have the first guy that was arrested for driving with Google glasses. DARPA envisions troops controlling platforms with their minds. Covered this recently as well, but it's back in the news. It says DARPA is on the cusp of using neural input to fundamentally change the human ma machine interface. It says here it's conceivable that a human brain signal could control a Virginia-class submarine instead of needing to input controls through touchscreens, knobs, and dials. So at least they're admitting it in this propaganda piece where they're trying to sell this. They're saying that neuroscience advancements are nearing a stage where people with prosthetic limbs could control these uh, with their minds. So, But it's going to be used for nuclear submarines and, and drones to kill people, right? I guess that will help people like soldiers that get over and get their legs or their arms blown off, you know, killing people. I guess they could come back and uh, they could be used as experiments, which is what I think they were used for. New artificial blood is made in Transylvania. Yes, really. So that's what scientists are creating. So wow, it could help in medical emergencies. Oh, even on the battlefield. Oh, that's so they're really worried about people not killing people first. Okay. A pipeline carrying liquefied petroleum gas exploded in a Texas town. People were evacuated. A court declines to block big oil pipeline. So a big pipeline carrying oil from tar sands crosses many states and is posed by environmental groups. So that's why you see this. Their solution is after this Alabama oil train derailed, it says they're now looking at rail safety questions. So keep the pipeline running. Keep the trains running. And the first ever reduction of ethanol and gasoline is proposed by the Obama regime. 
And the leader of the American Petroleum Institute says, huh, oh, it's actually bad for engines. That's going to help their profits, too. Our scientists want to creating a mutant bird flu virus. Look at that. Bird flu strain affects humans for the first time. Thank you.